<laughs> okay, let's go. Hello, my name is Tanya Kabia. I'm going to be on the Online Prosperity Show. And I'm speaking about how you can turn social media into your personal media publication to attract six figures deals as I have done. So stay tuned. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. Today, I've brought you the business and marketing strategies to solve Tanya. Tanya, how are you doing, my love? I'm doing good, and how are you? Fantastic. I haven't slept since I saw your message saying, let's collaborate, and I'm like, what? Let's do this. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuning in for the first time, I've brought you Tanya Kabuya, who is a business and marketing strategist based in South Africa. Now, Tanya works with people of influence, such as coaches, authors, speakers, course creators, and consultants, as well as small to medium businesses to elevate their brands from unknown and amplify their marketing message so they can stand out in their industries. And she actually helps you to attract quality clients and opportunities online using a content ecosystem playbook. We're going to be touching on about that content ecosystem uh, playbook that you have trademarked and also social media so you can create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In short, what Tanya does is she heads a disruptive full house marketing consulting firm that is on a mission to help the Davids of tech and the consulting industries to take out all the Goliaths that have been, um, you know, roaming the industries and are actually becoming the dinosaurs uh, in their respective industries there. Now, Tanya, you've given yourself a really big mandate. These Goliaths have got time, money, and effort behind themselves. How have you been, um, you know, tackling this? Um, first of all, you let us know a little bit about your business, how you got started, and where you are headed to uh, on your mission to tackle down these Goliaths. Right. Um, thank you for that introduction. Well, we all know as per the Bible, Goliath did go down with a slingshot. So, do, 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 do. it's absolutely. <laughs> but here's the thing. Um, I started out as a copywriter. So I got tired of being of working in corporate, working with companies, and I just want. I was tired of traveling all the time. I had a son, I barely saw him, and I wanted something that was different, that allowed me to still be a mom, not, not experience mommy's guilt, and still go after my dream. So I discovered freelancing on Cora. Shout out to Cora. That platform is the G in terms of finding answers. Yeah. So I, I started freelancing doing. Um, what is known as white labeling, my um, courses, courses for people. And then eventually I had a Canadian client that spoke to me and said that, hey, you know, like instead of just white labeling, private labeling these courses and selling it to us for a pop, why don't you create these and put your name on it? Now, at the time I had my own mindset blocks and i was like you know what nobody wants to learn anything from an african girl like i'm getting 400 500 dollar per pop with these i'm good and the guy was like well you're making 400 500 dollars this i'm making hundred thousand dollars with your uh, intellectual property outblown and is that either way they are already learning from an african girl they just don't know it yet so at the time, I was like, you know what? Um, that's many solution. <laughs> you clearly don't know what you're talking about. This is cool. Some kind of privilege. But it was, it set on my mind. And one day I decided, you know what? If I could find one African person doing the exact same thing as he said, I'll do it. So I got online. I thought, I, I like, I just have African motivational speaker. And I start, I, there's Tony Elumelo that comes up, there's Vusi Tembe Kwayo that comes up, there's um, Dr. Dembisa. And I start reading about these people, and I'm like, they're African. Okay. And then I 
was like, okay, you know, you know the way your mind works, and even when you find something and you like, now nah, it's still not okay. So I'm like, well, Tony Alumenu made his money in, ba- in banking. He owns a bank. So when I get to Vusi, now Vusi was another one. I was like, this boy is from Benoni. He's like two, three years older than me. And he's doing this? He's South African. Okay, I got no excuse now. And this is something that I now also tell my clients that are founders, that are consultants. I'm like, if you're a person of color, you have no business building a business in private. Because had I not been able to see the likes of Vusi, the likes of Tony and Lumelo, the likes of Dr. Dambisa, I wouldn't have had the courage to actually do this because I'll, I'll be like, this is out of reach. So after that, I start freelancing properly, offering my services. I didn't realize that getting clients as a white labelist and getting a client putting a name on it is two different playbook. <laughs> it's completely different. <laughs> because at least that way, you know, it was very transactional. This one is you need to get a lot of trust. And I'm this girl, I ain't got a lot of money. I can't be advertising on Facebook. I can't be advertising on any way. I need to figure out a way to get clients. And I started writing on social media. And I would write stories and bring it back to um, to marketing, bring um, write a thought-provoking kind of content, and that started turning into clients. And that eventually propelled building a business because then it went from freelancing to being a coach to eventually be like, you know what, and um, let's do a business. And that had been my journey. And and then it started turning into tech startups reaching out to you like, hey, can you help us go to market? Private equity firms reaching out to you like, hey, um, this is the type of deals we want to structure. Um, do you know any VCs, any companies that would be interested in seeing and then learning to actually be a business outside of being a social media personality? And that has been my journey. So it has been a step at a time, one, one step, to step back and figuring out things and just the way life is a journey. Absolutely. And I've got so much respect, especially for the journey that you took and for the fact that there are other people that paved the way for you in terms of representation. Now, now that you've had people that you sort of looked up to, are you doing anything for the girl child or for the boy child so that they can also see the representation that you were seeking in the marketplace because i know that's very important i'll tell you a story about that a little bit later i'm definitely doing that so there is something that i actually do privately that i don't even publicize we are find young women so let me give you a preface to this i think two years ago there was a story that um trended on twitter about this young girl that was seeking a job in Nigeria and she posted it on Twitter and somebody reached out to her and they agreed to meet that he said that he had a job for her and when she went there she went to meet the death because she ended up being raped and killed so when I saw that it trended on Twitter on Instagram I gave myself a mission to help equip young women with the necessary skills that they could leverage from their home instead of putting their lives in danger. So I do find young women that I feel that um, would benefit from, for now it's women because uh, that story touched me. And I help them with learning how to be a copywriter. So because I know that I did it, I know that it's doable and they can leverage that to start getting gigs online that has been something that i i have done that i'm very proud of more than the money i can make so that has been very fulfilling in terms of a goal and i'm hoping to do a lot more of that to be able to mentor 
some of more women, at least a thousand in the next couple of years, that will be able to create and write their own paychecks. Oh, that that is such a beautiful sentiment. And as a father of two adorable girls, I am always seeking out role models for them to emulate and people that can sort of, um, they can look forward to in terms of, uh, you know, having a life or having a happier existence. Now, part of what, what you're doing involves a lot of uh, coaching and also hand holding. You did mention something when you were giving your intro that had to do a lot with the mindset, um, you know, that you had prior, especially the limiting belief of you being a woman of color, um, you know, to venture into the space that you're getting into. Do you find that as something that is getting you, um, you know, that is sort of a bottleneck in the development of the things that you're doing? Today, no. Um, today, uh, I think what I initially thought was um, limiting is one of my strengths um, of the day because a lot of the the VCs, um, the private equity firms I work with, as well as the companies, the tech startups I work with, often are African. And the fact that I boldly talk about my African heritage on social media, how proud I am of being an African, and how Africans need to come together to actually develop the continent. That has been a force in terms of taking things by the storm. And a lot of people are like, hey, I love what you're doing. I want to work with you. And that has been from really established businesses to startups to consultants because I've owned what I initially thought was a problem. So today, my African heritage is for me the biggest selling point. Absolutely. And um, I would like to concur with that, me being... Uh, a migrant in this market as well. You know, I used to believe that I had to work twice as hard to get half of what any uh, fair-skinned or Caucasian person in my space would be getting. But all I realized is if you are true to yourself, if you've got the right kind of content, the right kind of information and the authority, which is built over time, you too can be doing have a business as profitable and enjoyable. And I really appreciate you bringing that to space. Now let's get back to the Goliaths and the Davids of this, because we did say this podcast is all about the slingshot. Tell us a little bit about how you are helping people gain brand recognition. So one of the best ways that I have found to gain brand recognition that I myself have leveraged is new media. And when I talk about new media, I'm talking podcasting. I'm talking YouTube, I'm talking newsletters, I'm talking social media. These platforms, new media platforms, have changed how things are done. Frankly, they've disrupted. If you look at it today, if a story is trending on Twitter, the media will pick it up. If a story is trending on YouTube, eventually the media, traditional media, will pick it up. The world has gone from traditional media dictating the narrative to new media dictating the narrative. And one of the things that I have found very powerful for companies, for startups, for consultants, independent consultants, is leveraging new media. And one of the ways that I approached building my brand was that I turned social media into my media platform. Something that I come to realize was that people, the minute that they woke up, myself, I'm guilty as well, I'm working on this, but it's an issue. One of the first things that they do is go get on social media. It's usually their favorite social media platform to scroll through while they're still in bed. This is an habit that previously, if you think about it, our parents had, especially our fathers, where they will pick up the newspaper, they will go out, pick up the newspaper, and have it with coffee. Nowadays, what we do, we get on social media and we scroll. Some will get on their emails and start reading their fa favorite newsletters. So something that I decided to do was that I was going to be 
one of the voices that they will be picking up every morning when they're scrolling through social media. So every morning from 6.30 to 7.30, I will usually post something, either a story, thought-provoking around um, marketing. And so, like this morning, I posted something about how years ago we went clubbing with some of our friends. And it was still on marketing and how some Nigerian boys coming there and popping champagne and bottles influenced my friends to start popping bottles. And then I brought it back to how marketing, how that was marketing a play for the club side. And people have been enjoying reading these kind of things. And it's always from 6.30 to 7.30. And one of my, my recent clients said that one of the, the reasons I came to work with you was that every morning from 6.30 to 7.30, I could expect that you would post a short article. He calls it an article. And I, I, until that day, I had never thought of it as articles, but they're quite lengthy posts. And that was one of the ways that I started bringing in clients into our business. Absolutely. And you just brought up a very good uh, point there, which has got something to do with consistency. You know, once you start posting, you want to create and maintain that consistency so that people get to know, like, and trust. And we all know that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. But since everyone is jumping onto these platforms, how do you then stand out or increase your um, brand visibility? Or how are you working with people so that they can be able to, um, you know, increase that visibility so that people can seek them out, especially in the morning when they're doing the morning scroll? In our company, we work with these two sides of the company. There's a coaching and training side, and there's the go-to-market agency consultancy that we have. A lot of times when we have companies that are really small, maybe bootstrapped, and things of the sort, and they or they are mid-sized established, but they don't have a sort of marketing in their business, and they just want to be trained, we coach them on how to do this, on how to create content that is riveting, that captures attention, that leverages storytelling, and as well as teaches and educates the market so that by the time they come to you, they kind of are pre-framed to your methodology. And with more venture-backed companies, what we do, then we come in as the, the marketing extension of your business, and we take over from creating the strategies from the ground up and developing the branding position, the brand positioning and everything and going to market. So we are very much um, a revenue focused type of consultancy agency where we don't just, we are not just implementers, but we are also advisors to the companies to best fit the narrative. So this is how we basically work with businesses. And it's one of the best way that I see B2B marketing going into like, things have changed. You can no longer be very transactional, um, only focusing on the intent of the people. Because a lot of the time, a lot of businesses, when they're thinking about marketing, they, they are focusing on intent. Now, here's the thing. I, I know that um, you do SEO. And we all know that if you're trying to compete with, a, I don't try to compete with you, on SEO in Australia, when you've been more established than me and you've gained Google trust. So if I'm trying to compete on that, I'm going to, I'm playing a losing game. And one of the things that we have learned to do for clients is create demand. So instead of, is of focusing on capturing demand, which is like only the three to 5% of the market, why don't we go from the grants up, the, uh, the people that may need your services, but needs to, to be handheld through the customer's journey. And at that time, you are able to capture them because at the time, by the time they are ready to do business, they cannot think of anybody else to work with. And that is one of the things that we focus on as well as obviously capturing demand. But that if you are focused on capturing demand, that becomes performance marketing, we need to leverage ads. So for some businesses doing that is very, it's not very easy. So we leverage less of those strategies if you have have a limited budget. Now, if we are working with a venture-backed company, of course, we leverage those, those tactics, but 
I have seen that creating demand from the grounds up creates much more leverage in the market in the long run for you as a brand because you build pipeline. And this is very important because instead of just focusing on sales today, when you are building pipeline, you are not only just creating sales for today, but you are creating sales for the next 12 months if you do it right. So these are the things that we primarily focus on. Fantastic. I've also noticed that amongst the tools of the trade that you use, you also have a uh, podcast that uh, people can uh, tune into. Can you tell us a little bit about that and also um so that our audience will be able to maybe subscribe to your podcast and get the insights um of how you are helping these uh davids um you know topple all the goliaths in the marketplace so our podcast is called this bees talk with tanya and it talks primarily on marketing um we interview other entrepreneurs that are also disrupting the industries and we try to share insightful content that brings you a lot more strategy, a lot more thought, a lot more uh, tactics that will be able to be implemented. We also have a newsletter that is on LinkedIn, Business Creed, Business Marketing Creed, and they are kind of share a lot more depth in terms of marketing, how to approach marketing. That was created more out of frustration of stories that other digital publisher would not carry and i was like you know what let me just build my own table and start with that and that platform has really been amazing um we've grown to 1800 subscribers in five months which was shocking for me and we are in the process of um turning that also into a digital um publication that will be launching quite soon business creed because i wanted to showcase a lot more um, other creators, other contributors that have uh, riveting thoughts, that have that I have thought-provoking so, so thoughts as well, and have a platform where I could show more insight on Africa. Because one thing I kept looking at, uh, especially when I was recently work, talking to a VC, an American VC, and I asked him a question as to, why aren't there enough VCs picking up startups in Africa? And he said the biggest problem with Africa was branding. Um, Africa was not doing enough to brand itself. And then a lot of VCs did not know about African opportunities. And I, I went with that to different publications as to why are they doing more to showcase Africa in a better light instead of just the light that has been painted. And nobody wanted to change the narrative. So I was like, you know what? Um, instead of waiting for a champion, maybe it's time that, yeah, I become the David that takes out takes down these Goliaths because they are not doing us a service. So this is the mission that we have this year of building this publication where we can not only show a lot more business creed from different people, but also showcase the beauty of the African continent and the opportunities that are in this place. Fantastic. I believe one of your publications should be called The Slingshot because definitely <laughs> what you are doing, either a podcast, The Slingshot, or um, a newsletter, The Slingshot, I will also then claim naming rights when you become very, very famous. All right. So I'm really happy with, um, you know, the conversation we've had so far. I mean, from being a copywriter to somebody who followed their dream and also um, is an inspiration to a lot more other people that haven't had a, um, you know, um, a chance to have representation in the marketplace. And then you went on to do a bit of freelancing, which then catapulted uh, yourself. Catapult is also a something to do with the slingshot, right? You see yeah. all the all the references are coming on there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I really, um, you know, had a good time uh, learning a little bit more about you. And I feel like um, this shouldn't be the end. We should maybe collaborate on a few more, maybe episode type uh, podcasts where we can literally talk about uh, these happenings that are happening uh, in Africa. So maybe I can um, also help you open up that channel 
uh, that is uh, needed to establish the brand um, that you're talking about in Africa. But so far, I'm really excited about what you've shared with us. And I really, really uh, would like to thank you and congratulate you on all the successes that you've had so far. Have you got any sort of last words, um, you know, to the people that are sort of arming and arming about their marketing and thinking, man, maybe I'll just keep doing what I was doing last year and um, whatever results I get, that will be it. Um, this is an interesting conversation and thank you so much for having me and um, sharing your platform with me. I really deeply appreciate that. I'm definitely game for collaborating further. For these people, if you've been doing something and it's not working, what makes you think that this year is the way, the, the, the year that is going to work? Also, given the fact that 2023 is the one year, there's a lot of uncertainty and consumer behavior is going to be disrupted because of that, because they are looking at tightening the belt, everybody that they're listening to are telling them don't spend your money if you don't need a thing. So now if you don't know how to market yourself adequately and how to shift beliefs properly, how are you going to make sales this year if what you've been doing last year did not work? So one of the things that I always tell people is that the first thing that you need to do is either learn by mistakes, and that's painful, trust me, I, I'm probably one of these people that thought that initially so that I don't need anybody I can do it all my, by myself. Child, didn't the world teach me that <laughs> you think you're better than everybody else? We will show you. And the best thing that I ever did was invest in guidance from other people, from other consultants, from, from coaches. So if you feel that you are what you're doing, it's not working, maybe it's time that you bring in some help. But the best, uh, the next best thing is listen to your consumer. One of the things that some people just don't do and I don't understand, when you get on a sales call, record it. Even if it doesn't work, um, that you don't get a client, the thing is that's actual market research. You get to hear the pains of your customers. And as a copywriter, this is the best thing that you can have in slice of bread because you get the customer's voice and you can leverage that to then put it in your messaging and change and shift their beliefs in that manner. So one of the best things, listen to your customers, ask them questions, ask what they want and give them what they want. So it's, the, it's as easy as that, but often most people don't do it. They just go straight to creating the solution instead of listening to the customer and then trying to make the, the customers fit into the box that they want them to. So that's definitely my best advice for anybody out there. Absolutely. But Tanya, not everyone can be like you just upping from Cape Town to Joburg with a suitcase full of dreams and less than a hundred dollars to your bank account. Not everyone is as brave as that. And look at you now. So some of, some of these things that you're saying might be very difficult for people to say, um, would I be correct by assuming that? Yes, definitely as a risk taker, I think I've taken more risks than a lot of people. And I remember my brother telling me, we thought you were crazy and we thought you were going to come back <laughs> after a month and that has not been the case. But even if you're not a, a risk taker like myself, take calculated risks. Um, if you feel that, okay, I'm really scared, to do something and instead of breaking everything and doing it like I did, seek guidance. I mean, there's people like you, Prosper, there, there are people like me. Seek that guidance because we can share the mistakes that we've made because you can learn a lot from other people's mistakes and what to avoid. Because I guarantee you that you've made mistakes when you started out that if you get somebody starting to then learn from you, could save three years of their business journey. Absolutely. I really appreciate. Absolutely. I really, really appreciate the time that you've taken, you know, uh, sharing your uh, story and your experience with us here. So those of you that are watching the show right now, thank you so much. And I'm hoping you've subscribed to this channel. And I'm also going to be putting 
all of Tanya's um, contact details in the show notes, just so that you can get in touch with her so you can learn more about how she's literally uh, taking down all the uh, Goliaths in the tech and finance industry um, all around the world today. Tanya, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Fantastic.